So you want to be an SRE and you've done all the hard work to get you to the interview stage, right? Like you've nailed the CV and you're sitting in front of the hiring manager or the SRE team. Now, as somebody who has been through, conducted and observed a number of SRE interviews, there's definitely some things that you want to be focusing on to increase your chances of success. Hey, I'm Admar and I'm a site reliability engineer based in London. And in this video, I'm going to share five tips for you to increase your likelihood of being successful in your next SRE interview. Now, this is not an exhaustive list, but these things are really key and can really help tip you over the edge so that you can get the role that you're after. So let's not waste any more time. So the first one is so obvious that you're going to wonder why I've put it in here. But the number of people who come into SRE interviews without being able to articulate what SRE is, what the key principles are, being able to clearly and concisely define what an SLI versus an SLO is and how they fit into this whole, you know, system of design, best practices and reliability is countless. Not only have I seen it, but I've spoken to a number of people who are hiring who say the same thing, like they couldn't articulate to me or explain what an SLO was, what an error budget was, what the key principles of SRE is and how it factors into the work we do, you know, throughout the software development life cycle. This is something that you should be able to kind of relay off the top of your head if you're going for an SRE interview. And I think a big place where people trip up is they look at the technical list of skills. Sometimes it's to do with things like, you know, must have knowledge of Linux or, you know, of pipelines. And those things are important, but the context in which they sit in for an SRE is equally as important, right? You should be able to show that off. So my tip here is make sure that you understand the principles. Go onto the Google website. Google has an SRE book, right? Or just look on YouTube or look on the resources that are out there in terms of things that I've created. I have a multitude of videos going through this. Make sure that you do your research so that you are prepared for that question because it's going to come up. What is SRE? What does SRE mean to you? What are the key principles? How would you design an SLO? What is an SLO? What is an error budget? You should know. The next thing is you should be able to demonstrate how the work you've done in the past has helped improve the reliability of the system that you're in, right? And whilst it's best if it is in a technical environment, it doesn't always have to be, but you should be able to clearly state how your action A led to this outcome B, and that improve the reliability of the system. And there's multiple ways that you can do this, but it's about listing all the things that you've done, capturing that information, and then going through them systematically. It's likely that if you are coming from a developer background that you've been involved in the error handling and the logging that is embedded in the application code, right? So lean on this, draw that out, because what that reflects to the interviewer or the person who is, you know, making the decision about whether you're gonna get the job or not, is that you understand that this is a key component of reliability in production, right? Because if that error handling or, you know, that logging is done effectively and efficiently, then when things go wrong, we are able to capture, see and alert on that effectively in production as part of our SRE team, right? So sometimes it's not so obvious the ways that your thing has, or the work that you have done has improved reliability, but I'm sure that it's there. And it's just about taking the time out to prepare for that so that when you get asked that question, you're ready to go. And you can draw on examples that really reflect that you wanna be amazing at ensuring that this system is reliable, that you can be counted on to bring value to the SRE team. One thing to remember that it's not always the person that is the most skilled or has the longest history who gets the job but the person who's able to communicate these things effectively which is why I personally do like the star method I know people go on and on about it but it is a simple way of you know demonstrating and articulating your experience and especially in the context of reliability like we're talking about the next one is probably going to cause you to roll your eyes but please don't and it's actually being able to demonstrate that you have the soft skills needed to be an SRE and I know for a long time a lot of us were like Ugh, soft skills gross but they are so key to being a efficient SRE that they can't really be overlooked and whether the person says it or the interviewer says it explicitly or not they're going to be looking for evidence of these skills in your history and in your work experience so what am I talking about I'm talking about things like problem solving sometimes as an SRE there's an issue with the system you may have some indication through some monitoring and alerting but you have to work the rest out you have to solve the rest of the problem trace back gather the right information in order to make an assessment make a judgment on what is going on so we can remedy this right so what in your past demonstrates that you have problem solving skills but also communication we do not work in isolation as the SRE team right we don't do everything on our own and we shouldn't be trying to do everything on our own so how are you able to communicate with people from different teams right who have different levels of understanding about what you're talking about right 
Or can you show that you can talk to developers in a way that they understand and respectful of what the work that they do, right? And how that integrates with what you're trying to achieve as an SRE. Have you got examples of working with people who have no technical experience, right? Maybe you're talking to the finance field, maybe you're talking to the people who make decisions about, you know, <laughs> about hiring. Can you communicate with them effectively? Right? The people who are making decisions that are going to impact how SRE can perform effectively and deliver on what they expected. It's also being able to do things like context switch, right? We're not developers all day long. We're not database engineers all day long. We are dipping into different things, especially, like I said, if you're doing reactive work, but also if you're doing proactive work. But right? I have done so many different tasks over my time as an SRE. Sorry. Things like cost optimization, things like improving logging in the application code, things like, you know, resource allocation and capacity planning. There are so many things, monitoring and alerting, setting things up from scratch or moving from one system to another, building custom monitoring, um, alerting pathways and architecture. So many touch points. So I have to be able to switch context. And I'm not saying you have to do that every three seconds because that would be excessive. But one day or one week, I may be working on this and the next week it may look different. And the next week you may be on call. And so whatever comes across your table, you need to be able to handle it. So can you show examples of being able to do that? And obviously one is going to be working under pressure because if you are on call, then when things go wrong, when the alerts start, you know, pager duty is, is dutying, right? It's, it's doing a lot. <laughs> How are you going to perform under pressure? Are you going to kind of shy away and, you know, panic? Or do you have experience in your past showing that, you know, actually I'm pretty good under pressure. And again, sometimes it will be a very technical example, but other times, it may be from a job where, you know, you was in a high stress situation with people, right? Where there was like a time constraint on the thing that you were trying to achieve and you didn't panic and you was able to deliver. And, you know, in the star method, this is what I was able to do. The next thing is actually understanding systems design and architectural best practices. One way that an interviewer or the us as the SRE team will try to ascertain if you understand how to build and maintain reliable systems is through architecture and architectural design effectively. And this is because reliability is not an isolated thing that we can kind of pinpoint in one section of of the life cycle right it's it is throughout this is embedded ideally throughout the whole system and therefore we may be talking about reliability on the level of the database maybe on the level of the server perhaps on the api levels maybe we're talking about cdns maybe we're actually talking about the application code or testing what about pipelines how does this vary between environments and so you really have to get comfortable with understanding how systems can be designed optimally for reliability effectively so get familiar with these spend time watching videos that are talking about architectural design or engaging with white papers that you know a lot of the big cloud providers like AWS and so forth put out for you and then dive deeper into these resources or the services that you may be talking about so you can understand again how to optimize how do you optimize S3 for example or your EC2 instance or you know your database for reliability and performance how could you do those things because you may be asked those questions and especially if you are going to be applying for a job in like a cloud environment they're going to be asking questions that link to that that link to that particular cloud provider right and the sun will be on-prem and granted I have a lot less experience of on-prem than I do of cloud I'm have to say I'm a cloud native SRE but you need to be able to articulate these things and Furthermore, you probably need to be able to draw them, right? Because in some of these interviews, interviews that I've conducted and interviews that I've had to do, I've been asked, you know, draw a diagram to reflect what you're saying. I want to see an architectural diagram right here, right now, <laughs> right? And so I've become used to using something called Dryo, which is a free software, and it's linked in my like resource guide that I can use to kind of, you know, draw out these diagrams and then you can talk about them. Even practice, practice doing them for different systems because the optimal architecture, say for a web application with thousands of users may be different to a platform that is supplying you know data financial data to the c-suite so it's largely um, a data pipeline that you're dealing with so get familiar with these things and practice 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 try and get feedback if possible from people in the industry that's really helpful but like use the videos and the resources that are out there for free and if you want to use paid resources go a step further but it's there's enough out there for you. The final tip I want to give you today is ask questions that show that you have a deeper knowledge of SRE than what may have been presented in the last hour. Now questions, that bit at the end when they say, do you have any questions, is a prime chance for you to show off things that haven't been able to like, you know, rear their heads so far, right? Perhaps they haven't spoken to you about alerting in their system, right? But you want to bring up automated alerting. You're asking them questions about how they handle this. Or maybe they haven't spoken about incident reports and incident management. Maybe they haven't spoken about the in depth about their monitoring alerting system. Maybe you didn't remember them talking about distributed tracing. And when you ask these questions, what you are showing is that you understand bits about the reliability kind of principles that they haven't yet spoken about, right? So it's your chance to dive deeper. Better yet, 
If you've also kind of researched the business, then you can get even more specific about the things that you want to talk about and the questions that you want to ask as they relate to this particular problem or the products and services that are being offered by this company and how they relate to reliability. Just whatever you do, when it gets to the question bit, don't say, I have no questions. I think it's just always a red flag. You have no questions, you're going to work for me in this thing and I've answered all your questions as the interviewer. This whole, I mean, I guess. And it's, I'm not saying that it's necessarily going to kill your chances completely, but I do think it lowers it. And why not use every advantage that you have to increase the likelihood that you're going to get this SRE job if you, if you want it. That's what I wanted to talk about today, but I will leave some resources, like I said, in the description, the free SRE resource guide that I have. Also the webinar that I did a while back, um, which has a lot more information on preparing for, you know, the process of getting an SRE job. That's just linked in YouTube. Also my course, if you want to dive a little bit deeper, all that stuff will be left in the description for you to explore. But um, I'll see you in the next video.